there. All right, three, two, and one. Uh, well, Mayor Mike, uh, we've made it here. Welcome back. Uh, Mayor's Monday here at WSAU, WSAU.com. Actually, well, I, I don't know if we can say that we've made it with full confidence. All we can say is that we have made it today to our respective offices, and sometimes that's half the battle, right? Exactly. And the weather is looking spectacular this week. Um, so if, if there was ever the spring is in the air kind of thing, I hope this is it. I mean, we're, we're supposed to hit like 40 degrees tomorrow. So yeah, I, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Uh, let's yeah, let's do it. Let's go outside. Let's embrace it. Let's um, take a uh, take a polar plunge somewhere. <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, let's do it. It's funny you say that because this Saturday uh, this last Saturday. Several of our police officers did exactly that. Mm -hmm. As you know, the police department is a, a big supporter of Special Olympics nationwide. Um, they're kind of synonymous. And to raise money for Special Olympics, our police officers jumped in the river on Saturday uh, at high noon. They kicked it off to raise money for Special Olympics. And we had uh, some of our lieutenants and officers take the plunge. Um, and uh, they all survived and raised money for a great cause. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I got to love it. I mean, it especially you know for a great cause like that it, it wasn't uh, the best conditions for a polar plunge maybe you know <laughs> middle of last week things got a little better on on uh saturday and uh i know the uh i know the cops uh they not only uh you know is it kind of something that's very close to them but it's something that they just enjoy doing uh you know period. And, and i can't say enough about it our police officers our firefighters you know they bust their humps uh day in and day out protecting and serving our community and then in their off time they're out doing other good things in our community the fire department and the police department are probably some of the biggest supporters of just general things going on in our community whether it's raising money for special olympics or muscular dystrophy association um we, we can't say enough about those men and women in emergency services and you know that and that's also uh again something that uh you know i was actually going to bring up uh, about the police department, police and fire commission are obviously been very busy uh, lately doing interviews uh, for a couple of high level positions that you have down there. And while this is all going on, your city really hasn't missed a beat. So uh, that's another feather in the cap of the department as well. Yeah, we're, we're in the process of hiring a new fire chief. Um, our fire marshal recently took a, a new job, uh, bigger, better things. So, you know, Stevens Point is is getting out there um, in the world and uh, our employees are doing wonderful things all across the country now. So uh, we're really proud of them. That's uh, that's something really cool. If you didn't get a chance uh, this weekend, you're going to have to wait a whole other year. But the Isaac Walton League just uh, had their I think it was their 55th annual jamboree out at the clubhouse. Um, that's that's a pretty big staple here in the Stevens Point community. Everybody looks forward to the burgers and prizes at the Isaac Walton Jamboree that was on uh there was a district one uh had a big brothers big sisters um, yeah big brothers big sisters fundraiser um out at district one brewing this past weekend so tons of stuff doing great things to help the community that went on this past weekend um here in Stevens Point yeah, we've, and we've got some more that we might uh, talk about later on to give people uh, a chance to look forward to. But uh, first off, uh, you know how Mayor Katie up here in Wausau is, you know, gets on these kicks sometimes. She's, you know, gets on her goat kicks. She gets on her, uh, uh, occasionally her poetry slam uh, yeah. kicks. You've been on a history kick lately. Uh, you know, it's kind of weird. It was, it was thrust upon me, if you will. By the way, the goats are pretty cool. I, I would love to do something yeah, like that here. Absolutely. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it worked out kind of weird. Um, I got in touch with uh, Stan Amernick, who is an area resident, and he had some historic point merchandise that he was looking to get rid of. Uh, so I went over there and took a look at it. He's got buttons from, uh, you know, vote for Mayor Jim Fiegelson or the Centennial button when Stevens Point celebrated its 100th anniversary and a ton of things from the 125th celebration, a mug and a hat, some pins. Uh, Point Brewery made a beer specifically for the 125th. And I got a couple of those. We're gonna try them in the office a little bit later. I don't know what uh, a 50 year old beer is gonna taste like, <laughs> but we'll, we'll figure it out. I know. Um, so, 
so I, I went and I talked to him about all this stuff and uh, man up managed acquiring it. And uh, there's some duplicates. So I talked to John Harry over, who's the director over at the Portage County Historical Society. He's going to check in his inventory. So if any of my doubles or things that he doesn't have, uh, we're going to send those over to the Historic Society so they can preserve those. But it was really cool stumbling across this piece of history. There's a little plastic cup uh, that they had for, I assume, the beverages. And it was dot one, two, five. And you know, point one, two, five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How clever is that? That is. <laughs> and, then it, and then it got a little bit further. I got a contact from a, a man named Jerry Skerka, who lives up north. And his father had a bunch of old eight millimeter footage of uh, you know his family and things that were going around in the community that was older. He had projected it onto a screen and, and copied it to a VHS through a camcorder. And uh, he said, there's some centennial stuff on here I think you might like. So I met with him and we watched the, the, the footage um, and there was, he had eight millimeter footage of the Stevens Point Centennial Parade and celebration that ensued downtown and at Buchholz Park. Um, so he offered it up. I converted it for him uh, to digital. And for doing that, he gave us uh, the rights to use it. So we cut it up and posted it. You're gonna be able to see some of that footage at stevenspoint.com or on our Facebook page uh, or our YouTube channel. I also shared it out on my social media page. So if that's something that interests you, I mean, boy, 1958, uh, Joe's Bar was founded in 1958. Uh, Joe Strike bought it, and uh, then he passed it on to his son, Roger, and then to Roger's son, Sean. Sean is the current owner. And there's video footage there. When I showed it to Sean, uh, he was amazed because he was too young. He never actually saw anything but photos of his grandfather. And here's a, a video, eight millimeter film of uh, his grandfather, the year he bought the bar, driving around in the square after the parade with a kegger in the back and a boomba in his hand. Uh, his grandmother's on the film. It was, it was quite amazing and really moving, uh, especially for the Strike family. And uh, boy, to see the other stuff, there was a beard contest. Wh whoever could grow the biggest beard. And one of the things that I got from Mr. Amernick was a button that was a free shave. Well, apparently that was tied into the, the beard contest or oh, sure. the beard contest. And afterwards you could go and get a free shave and, and get it all cleaned off, but really mm -hmm. amazing stuff. There was some native American uh, dance demonstrations at Buco park and pony rides and a carnival. Uh, you probably are going to recognize some of the people in there. If you can make them out, uh, you know, your, your grandfather or, or maybe uh, your parents when they were real little. Uh, so you check them out again at stevenspoint.com or at our YouTube channel. Uh, or our social media, Facebook page or, or uh, Instagram. So then uh, why, why is, are these artifacts then, you know, so important uh, to you or to the city uh, to, you know, kind of stumble across these and preserve them and, and uh, turn them over to the historical society like that? You know, uh, it's not important to everybody. And, and I'm a firm believer that it should be, you know, where we came from, how we got here is, very telling and learning about things that have happened in our past will help us not only today but in the future you know those who are ignore the past are destined to repeat it that old saying or whatever it is um but what i find most interesting is the you know the the differences and similarities that we had with people you know 60 years ago 1958 they still had you can tell from the the parade footage they had community pride uh, there were people dressed up in old timey, you know, uh, clothes from 1858, and that that it was a big community event, and everybody kind of gathered around and celebrated together. Well, that's that's really what Stevens Point is about today. Uh, you know, we have a lot of community pride. We love those events. We get out and we show that pride, and uh, we have fun doing it. So in that case, we're we're very similar. Um, so it, it's really cool. And preserving the history is so important because once it's gone, you really don't get it back. I mean, there are stories or maybe someone's gonna stumble across some old video footage, but an example is uh, there's a, a church, not, not really historic, I guess, uh, but it's an older church that was later converted to a dance studio. And then that dance studio really fell into disrepair. The basement flooded and it, it got neglected for a lot of years. 
the county actually wound up taking the property from the owner because of uh, non-payment of taxes. And um, it looks nice from the outside, but you get inside and it's pretty rough. I actually had a friend of mine, Barry Kalnan, who does these 3D uh, shoots. And he's helping us preserve some of our history by getting into these buildings that are in such disrepair that they have to be torn down and documenting what they look like before we have to tear them down. So they're, they're archived forever, uh, basically. So the church that is converted to a dance studio and then ultimately got into such disrepair, the city bought it and we put out bids to see if anybody wanted to do anything with it. Well, of course it was in such bad shape. The only bid we got was for someone to tear it down. Uh, so we're gonna have to do that. We're gonna be forced into a situation now where we have to tear this church down. Uh, the cool thing is though, whenever we're doing something like that, we try and salvage whatever we can or have other people salvage whatever they can. So we had the Playhouse Theater Group came in and took a bunch of the costume stuff that was abandoned from the dance studio. So they're going to use it. Uh, and we'll talk more about Playhouse Theater Group in a little bit because they got some cool things going on. And then Wildcard Works, uh, which is the company that bought the old Fox Theater, and they're turning it into what they're calling the Opera House, which is going to be a big event venue. They're doing some wonderful restoration work. The project is coming along better than I even thought it was. Um, their dedication to keeping that history is, is really important and uh, they take it seriously. So they uh, asked if they could get in and, and there's some wood trim that's salvageable, woodworking that's salvageable, it's not too damaged. They're actually salvaging that and repurposing it. They're gonna be in the opera house. So you're taking one piece of history that we're losing, put it in another piece of history that was almost lost and it, you're, you're kind of creating something brand new um, that has a, a very historic feel. So in that regard, it's good. And then uh, a friend of mine, Chelsea Piffner, uh, she's from Milwaukee, but her family's here. You may recognize the name from Piffner Park or a couple of other yeah. uh, family members that are here, the Piffner House and things like that. Well, she has a, a Facebook page called Historic Stevens Point. She is very much into preserving our history as well. She's actually providing a memorial service for the church. Uh, and she's going to be doing that on the 20th. At 12.30 in front of the church, uh, I believe she's got a trumpet player playing taps and perhaps Ben Gaboda on the accordion playing uh, Amazing Grace. And then they're all meeting at the Rose House Cafe downtown uh, at 1.30 to just get together and share stories and, and thoughts and ideas. So that's, I think that'll be a first. We're having a, a memorial service for a building. No, it's certainly nothing I've ever heard of. So, it, but it's a great way to, again to uh, to bring people together to to reminisce about uh, what this building was and uh, in and who knows. So once the city puts out uh, RFPs, decide what the building will be in the future, right? Because right? yeah, I'm right. sure you're you're eventually going to end up going through that process with this as well. Or have you not thought that far ahead yet? Yeah, no. We, we're gonna once it's a vacant lot, then we'll put out RFPs again for someone who wants to construct. It will likely be like a a single or multifamily unit on that parcel. Gotcha. So yeah, we'll we'll see where where that ends up going, and and uh, again, we'll we'll be there to uh, pay our respects uh, to the church. In yeah, uh, you if, should come down after maybe before or after the services. We can go to Iverson and uh, and do a little sledding. If you don't have a sled, you don't have to worry about it. I, I was just thinking the exact same thing. Yes, yes. We, let's we, go. We sledding. opened up a sled library last week. Yes. And so, uh, uh, the, how that's gone. So the sled library is just this concept. Uh, you've probably seen the little book libraries or, or food pantries in your neighborhood where people are just building little boxes. And, uh, you know, if they have extra books, you can come there and swap a book out, loan a book. Uh, well, we're doing the same thing with sleds. So at Iverson Park, uh, we actually got the idea through our community development director, Ryan, who got it from the city of Menasha. Uh, and we put it together. So we, we had the parks guys build this little wood frame. And in there, we have borrowable sleds. You can take a sled and, and use it for the day or the afternoon and uh, replace it when you're done. If you have sleds laying around your house you're not using, by all means, come and donate them. Um, and they're just free sleds to the public. And the idea is catching on. Uh, Mayor Fredrickson up in Rhinelander just opened one up this past weekend. Uh, they were mm -hmm. working with some city uh, citizens to put this together. So it's a great idea. I mean, one of the things that I pride ourselves on here in Stevens Point is our ability to share and help one another. 
this is just one small way. Uh, people are coming into town and they're maybe here for a, a sporting event. They want to have something to do, but well, we didn't bring any sleds. So now they can come to Iverson with the kids and, and use the loaner sleds as much as they want. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I know the idea has been done in Eau Claire uh, as well. And I, I'm hearing that it's catching on uh, elsewhere. So it's certainly uh, something that, again, people are, are rallying around. One more, uh, a couple more things before we let you go. First off, uh, we have to congratulate you. Uh, you are now a big wig in the Wisconsin League of Municipalities. You can see it right there on your shirt. Uh, tell us what this means for for you and, and maybe what it means for the city as well. Sure. Well, the Wisconsin League of Municipalities uh, is kind of a peer group, a peer support group. So they... Um, they're kind of a lobby group to, that help municipalities or municipal leaders throughout the state of Wisconsin. Um, and, and they do all sorts of things. They, they help lobby our legislature to get laws passed that are good for the state. Uh, they help train and continue training uh, elected officials, public works departments, uh, finance, uh, attorneys, anything involving municipal government, the league uh, is supportive of and, and helps uh, municipalities guide them through uh, whatever it is training or, or maybe just some peer-to-peer uh, -peer support well recently I was appointed to the board of directors for that group and this past weekend we had our first quarter meeting right here in Stevens Point with mayors and municipal leaders from all over the state getting together to decide the direction that the uh, the league is going to be going over the next year or so our president Justin Nichols who's the mayor of Manitowoc uh, took the lead, and, and I expect great things uh, as we move forward, but uh, it, was a, it was a big honor to be appointed to the board, and um, I'm proud to wear the shirt, and uh, you yeah. know, we'll, we'll talk about this periodically because we meet every quarter and talk about the issues that the league is facing um, and how they affect municipalities throughout the state. Of course, the big things going on right now are the infrastructure bill and ARPA, uh, but there's also things like personal property laws that are getting proposed that may affect uh, municipalities in a bad way. So we want to stay on top of that and, uh, and lobby our legislators to make sure they're doing what's best for us. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And we'll, we'll see how that uh, goes for the rest of the uh, rest of the year. It's a one year commitment for you, if I remember right. Correct. Uh, I think that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. We, well, we think we'll, we'll find at out least, right? at least a year. How's that? Yeah, at least a year. There we go. Uh, and yeah. then finally, uh, there's a lot of great stuff going on uh, this month down there in Stevens Point uh, that you want people to come into town for. Uh, give us an idea of uh, just exactly what some of those uh, things are coming up here. There sure is. I mean, you know, there's always something going on in Stevens Point. And if anybody is thinking about visiting, by all means, contact my office. I'd be happy to share all of those events with you. But a uh, bunch of things going on. So we mentioned that the Playhouse Theater Group took the uh, some of the costumes. Well, they have a fairy tale ball coming up on February 19th, Saturday, February 19th. And it's designed for younger kids, but they have their actors dress up as princes and princesses. Um, and you can have lunch and do autographs. And, uh, you know, you'll see uh, people like Cinderella and the Little Mermaid and Snow White. Uh, all of those people will be there. There is a cost, uh, but you can get information online uh, at their social media site. Uh, Playhouse Theater Group. Playhouse Theater Group is also doing a production of The Wizard of Oz, and that's coming up uh, February 24th, 25th, and 26th. That's when the shows are. Tickets go on sale right now. Um, if you're interested, the Playhouse Theater Group is great because it's, uh, it's a younger group. Uh, most of them are children or at the very oldest high school age. Um, they're all great performances. Uh, so if you're interested in that, even remotely, the tickets are cheap. Um, spend an afternoon watching The Wizard of Oz. On um, February 27th, <coughs> excuse me, February 27th is our annual Polkas on Ice. Several years ago, we put an ice rink downtown um, and we had a couple of young ladies, uh, Jessica Caves and uh, uh, Lily Perlock, did the chicken dance and sent a video out doing a chicken dance on ice. And someone said, why we should do polkas on ice and boom it was born we did it that year uh it was a success the very next year we had sponsors uh and it's turning into a very big deal that's going to be february 27th around 11 a.m is when we start 
There'll be punchkas and pierogi, hot chocolate, mulled wine, um, and lots of good polka music, dancing, skating. Even if you don't bring skates, come out and hang out, socialize, um, and that'll be a great time. And then finally, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about UWSP. It's at UWSP in the Dreyfus University Center. Some friends of mine are putting on what they're calling Saturday Night Drag, and that's February 19th as well at 6.30. Uh, it's a drag show, and it's always a lot of fun. So if you've never been to one, I would encourage you to check it out at least. Lots of fun. Keep an open mind about things, and uh, you're guaranteed to have a blast. That, among other things, you know, we've got hiking, skiing. The Everson Winter Park area is open. Uh, tons of things going on. So come on down to Stevens Point. So then uh, you don't have RuPaul coming in for this one, do you? Not yet. Not yet. See how okay. optimistic I am there? <laughs> <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Hey, I, I've from what I've heard, the energy around those shows is, it is so much fun. Charts. And, and who knows, I may even get up yeah. on stage there, uh, you know, if the mood hits me. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Hey, you know, some people like me, we like to be around this energy here at a, at a stadium <laughs> with 18,000 people. Some people like to be around that energy just, uh, and, you know, ironically enough, as I say this, either, either brands of energy can be found in Stevens Point, right? <laughs> yep, we've got it all. We got it. Uh, absolutely. Well, Mayor Mike, we always appreciate the time and uh, we'll look forward to chatting again next month. Great. See you soon.